What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to do advanced serialization in python using the dill package so let us get right into it all right so dill is an external python package and it can be seen as the extension to the core python package pickle which we use to serialize objects in python now, Dill does the exact same thing as Pickle. It serializes and deserializes objects, but it allows us to do that with more different object types. So Dill supports things that Pickle does not support. And serialization in and of itself is the process of taking a Python object and turning it into a byte stream so that we can, for example, send it via a network connection or so that we can write it to a file. And Dill is, as I said, basically Pickle, but it supports more different things that we can serialize. So we can go here to the... Uh, pip page and you can see what kind of uh, types it supports. It supports the standard types that Pickle supports as well and it supports some more exotic standard types like functions with yields, nested functions, lambdas and so on. I didn't try all of them to confirm but I just believe them that they support all of this. They don't support yet frames, generators and tracebacks so you cannot serialize those things with Dill. You can also not serialize those things with Pickle. So whatever you can do with Pickle you can also do with Dill. Uh, not the other way around, obviously. So what you need to use, uh, what you need to do to use dill is you need to open up a terminal and you need to say pip3 install dill. And then you can basically use it exactly in the same way that you would use pickle. So if you say import pickle, and if you say import dill, whatever you can do with pickle, you can also do with dill. Uh, with dill. So we can say pickle dump pickle load and stuff like that and it's the same with dill so dill dump and dill load so just for those of you who don't know how serialization works i'm going to give you a very simple example we're going to have a person class here and this person class will have some constructor in it and it's going to take a name and an age and we're going to say self.name is going to be equal to name self.age is going to be equal to age we're going to also have uh, a function get older by a certain number of years, which is obviously just going to increase the age by years. And then we're going to have a simple representation uh, dunder method here that just returns the name and so self dot name and the H in parentheses self.h very simple concept here very simple class and what we can do now is we can create a person instance so i can say p equals person i can call this person mike and mike can be 20 years old and then i can print this person you can see i get mike 20 down here and what i can do now is also i can call the function p get older um and of course i need to pass years so let's go ahead and pass 10 and you can see we have Mike 30 here now. So what we can do now is we can take this person and we can pickle it. So we can serialize it. Uh, we can turn it into a byte stream. And again, this can be used to just save it in a file and load it somewhere else. Um, or it can be used to transmit this object via a network connection. Because of course, I cannot just take this Python object here and just put it into, into a network stream and expect it to... Uh, to be transmitted on the other side or to the other side, we need to turn this into a byte stream first. So how do we do that with pickle? Of course, we can just say here import pickle. We can just say pickle dot or actually with open and we're going to call this person dot pkl writing bytes mode sf and then I can say pickle dump the object p to the file f and this would then save this as a pickle file now i can delete all of this or actually maybe i should keep the person class but i can now go ahead and say with open and person pkl again this time in reading bytes mode come on reading bytes mode as f and then i can just print f dot uh, F dot read or actually no sorry pickle dot load f and you can see i get mic 30 again even though i didn't define mic 30 any anywhere here so it takes that from the pickle file now 
All of this works also with dill. I'm not going to show you here because we're going to go through enough examples here. But all of this, all you can do with pickle, you can do in the exact same way with dill. The only thing that changes is that you don't say pickle load and pickle dump, you say dill load and dill dump. So like this. Okay, so that is basic serialization. Now pickle has some limitations that dill does not have. So what we can do, for example, or what we cannot do rather with uh, pickle is we cannot serialize lambda expression. So if I say uh, my square is a function and the function is defined by a lambda expression, so lambda x returns x squared. This is a function and I cannot serialize this function with pickle. So I cannot go ahead and say with open uh, my object dot pkl in writing bytes mode sf. I cannot just go ahead and say pickle dot dump the my square function into the file because it's going to tell me now can't pickle function lambda and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is not possible. However, I can go ahead and say dill dot dump. And you can see it just created this my object pickle file. And I can then basically copy this. I can open this in reading bytes mode. Actually, I can delete all of this now. And I can just say my square is equal to dill dot load from the file stream f. And then I can just print here my square 10. And I will get, oh, sorry, reading bytes. Uh, and we get 100 here because we were able to serialize this lambda expression. And the same thing also works with nested functions. It does not work with uh, nested functions when using pickle. So let's say I have here a function outer and it takes a parameter x. And inside of that function, I have a closure. So a nested, uh, a closure, so a nested function um, inner and it takes a parameter y. And what I want to do here is I just want to return x plus y. Nothing too complicated here. And that is basically my nested function that I have here. Now, this is not serializable. If I say, for example, now, uh, add 20 is my function. Um, and I just say it's outer 20. So this basically, uh, oh, sorry, I need to return the inner function here. This now returns a function where x is fixed as 20. So it's basically uh, this method here or this function here, but x is not a variable, but just 20, a constant. And this is also not serializable with pickle. So I can go ahead and try uh, with open, maybe I should keep that code so that I don't have to constantly retype it. My object pickle writing bytes mode sf pickle dot dump at 20 into the file. And you can see it cannot pickle this object, but still can. There you go, it's pickled. And then I can again, copy this, open it in reading bytes mode. And I can say at 20 is equal to dill dot load f, I can get rid of all this, I think, I can comment this out so that we don't have to delete it. Then I can just print at 20. Let's go with 30 here. And you can see I got 50. So even though the function is nowhere to find, I was able to uh, serialize that function and load it back. And of course, this doesn't work only with a file, I can also take that function and transmit it via a network connection. And then I can deserialize it again, to use it. Uh, another example that I want to show you here, this might be a little bit more useful is you can also serialize uh, thread locks. So we have in Python, the module threading and in threading, we have locks and locks are basically uh, synchronization tools. So we can acquire a lock, we can release a lock, and a lock can only be acquired once. So if a lock is acquired, and another uh, thread, for example, tries to acquire the same lock, uh, it doesn't work because it's already acquired. So it has to wait for it to be released. And the lock and the state of the lock are not serializable objects, um, or the lock is not the serializable objects, you cannot serialize locks and their states using pickle, but you can do that with dill. So let's go ahead and come up with an example here, my class, 
whatever you want to call it. We're going to have a simple constructor. It's going to give us uh, or it's going to take an initial underscore value. And we're just going to say here self dot value is going to be equal to the initial value and self dot lock is going to be a threading dot lock instance. And all we want to do now here is we want to have a function increase. And this function will take a parameter by and it's going to say self dot lock dot acquire. So it's going to acquire the lock, it's going to increase the value by whatever we passed, and then it's going to release the lock. And then we might also want to have a uh, function or a method here lock, uh, lock value. And all this is going to do it is it's going to manually acquire the lock and then we're going to copy this we're going to have a second function unlock value and it's going to release the lock. Now this is not a very useful example. It's just a class that has a lock and the value and we can change the value and we can acquire and release the lock. Uh, but you can see that this has a state the lock has a state it's either acquired or not it's available or not. Um, and this is something that we might want to serialize we might want to send an instance of this class uh, via a network stream it doesn't work with pickle it does work with dill. So again, I'm going to uncomment this and now we're going to create an instance here. So we're going to say my object is going to be equal to my class. We're going to start with zero here. And then we're going to just say my object increase 20, for example, and then we're going to say my object lock value. And um, the interesting thing here is if I now say without any serialization. So let's just comment, come on, let's just comment this out. If I now try to increase, I'm going to never reach the end of the script because of course, it's now acquired and to increase I need to acquire so I will never release and because of that, I won't progress with uh, with the script here. Um, however, if I don't do that, and I serialize that object, first of all, let me show you again that this does not work with pickle. So my object will be serialized here. With pickle, you can see it doesn't work, but it works with dill. And the interesting thing is I can do this. And now that I have this in the pickle file here, I can also remove this again. Um, I can comment this out again. And here I can try now to say my object dot increase um, 10, for example, and you will see that the code does not progress. Why? Because the lock is acquired. This is what we loaded from the serialized file. This is what was serialized. The state of the lock is still that the lock is acquired. We need to first release it. And you can see that this is the case. If I say here, my object uh, unlock underscore value, and I rerun the script, then you can see that this works without a problem. So those are three examples, I'm not going to go through all the data types. One more thing that I want to show you here, it's quite impressive is we can even serialize uh, the state of the interpreter or the state of a uh, of a script. So of a session, you could say. So let's just create a new file here session serialization. And we're going to import dill. And what we can do here is we can just do something. So we can just write any code counter equals zero for i in range and then maybe 100. What I can do is I can say counter plus equals one. And then I can say if i is equal to 25, for example, what I want to do is I want to say dill dot dump. And then I want to use a file name my session pkl. And this basically what this does is it takes the state, the current state of this script, which, oh, by the way, sorry, it's not dump, it's dump module. Uh, it was dump session in earlier versions, but it's now deprecated, you can see that this is the case if you try to say dump session, it will uh, strike through the text here. But if I say dump module, it basically dumps the session. And the idea here is that everything that's currently active, everything that's currently happening here, um, at this point where I call this function will be serialized will be saved into a pickle file or into a byte stream for uh, 
into a by stream, uh, essentially. So we have a counter zero, we have a, a loop where we do something. And what we do here essentially is we increase the counter. So what I can do is I can dump the module, I can then uh, remove all of this code, except for the import, maybe, and then I can just say dill dot load module. And I can say my session pickle. And then I can print the counter. And you can see it's 26. Even though I don't have the counter here, even though I don't have anything here, I can do the same thing with I, it basically saves the full state of the session. And I can continue to work from where I stopped. And this can also be useful to just transfer your current uh, Python session via a network uh, stream to another device, and then you can continue there. For whatever reason, you might want to do that. But this is possible with Dill, you can save, you can serialize and deserialize your session. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.